My name is Neil Petwari. This is EC5510, Random Processes, and I'm going to talk about an example. How to find the PDF or CDF of the sum of two random variables. And we're going to use the method of moments, just like we talked about last time. Except now, our function for y is going to be x1 plus x2. And the question is, what is the PDF of y or CDF of, of y? And we're going to start with the method of moments, which always asks us to find the CDF first. It's equal to the probability that y is less than or equal to little y. And then I'm going to write in the function for y, x1, plus x2, less than or equal to little y. Well, what happens here? We're trying to find the pre-image, the area where x1 and x2 make their sum less than or equal to little y. And um, basically what we need to do is first we're going to draw the line where x1 plus x2 is equal to little y. So we're going to draw equality line. I'm going to make this a two-step procedure. And the equality line is, well, x1 plus x2 is equal to y. It's easier to see sometimes that it's a line if you write it as x2 equal to y minus x1, or the other way around. And if I do this on a graph, um, I can label x1 and x2 as my axes, and I can try to figure out what this line is. Well, it's got a uh, x1 intercept of y, so when x1 is equal to y, y x2 is equal to 0. So the same thing works for uh, here, when x2 is equal to y, x1 is equal to 0. And this has a slope of minus 1, so I know there's a s uh, straight line going through the two intercepts there. So the step 2 is to figure out what area, which side of this line, is the correct side. Uh, so I'm going to say shade inequality side. And what that means is to figure out whether it's this side that's included in the equality or points on this side that are included in the equality. Well, for example, let's say that y is positive, and so my picture does look like this, and I'm going to take y comma y. Is that point included? Well, I'm trying to find points such that x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to little y. If I plug in y and y here, that is not going to be less than or equal to little y. So this point is not included. And in fact, the points on this side of the line are the ones included. We could have found that by plugging in 0 comma 0, for example. Well, now that I've done that, um, I can find this integral. So let's continue with this integral. Of course, the probability is an integral. When I have multiple random variables, I have multiple dimensions. So when I'm trying to find, and in fact, I want to include this uh, graph here, um, I'm going to try to find how to find this integral in two dimensions. I first am going to integrate across x1 from minus infinity to plus infinity, but then my x2 limit is going to stop at a positive value of y minus x1. That's because at any particular value of x1, I can only integrate from minus infinity to y minus x1. When I integrate, I integrate across the PDF to find that probability. OK, so how do I find this integral? Well, in general, it's very difficult. Um, but what we can do is we can talk about what this, the PDF would be here. This was the CDF, remember, that I found by the method of moments. Well, what would the PDF be? Well, it's the derivative with respect to little y of the CDF. And here, if I were to put in this d dy right here, um, if I were to put that in right there, it wouldn't, the only dependence on y is right here. So 
the only place that this derivative would need to operate on is on this inside integral. So this is going to be the integral from x1 equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. I'm going to have d dy, and then I'm going to have my second integral, my inside integral. Now what is that inside integral? Well, it's actually using the fundamental theorem of calculus it's going to say that that this whole integral is just equal to the argument of the integral operated at y minus x1. Why is that? It's because um, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that when the upper, in, uh, upper limit is equal to the var variable that I'm differentiating, that all I need to do is plug in this y minus x1 into the x2 and the inside of that in integral expression. So I'm going to be left with x1 equal minus infinity to plus infinity of f of x1, x2, but evaluated at x1 comma y minus x1. This is this term being plugged in here. And I only have one integral. So now for my PDF, I only need to find one integral. Let's take this one step further. Let's assume that the two random variables are independent. That means that the, the PDF here, the joint PDF, is the product of two PDFs. So same integral, but when I write this out, I'm going to write it out as the PDF of x1 multiplied by the PDF of x2. But of course, the second argument is y minus x1. And what does this look like? If you think back to your ECE 3300, uh, 3, this looks a lot like a convolution, doesn't it? Typically, we had uh, one function evaluated at x and another function evaluated at lambda minus x. Well, here, our lambda is just some constant. Here we're calling it y. So this is going to be f of x1 convolved with f of x2, but then um, evaluated at uh, x equals y. Another way that people write convolution is they just write the function names. They convolve the two functions, and then put in the variable name that they want to put in there. So you can see that this is how we find the PDF of y when x1 and x2 are independent. In the more general case, we would have to go back to um, this expression up here. That's the more general case for the PDF, f of y. And if we wanted the CDF of y, we would be back up here except for this. Okay, And that's all I have for this particular video segment. And next we would talk about the Jacobian method for the transformation of random variables.